We're going to start today with the latest in COVID mania, what it has revealed about our society and why I believe it should make us feel good about the future. First off, it has been fascinating to watch as many hysterical people come to the grips with the realities of COVID. Like, you can catch and spread it even if you're vaccinated. The vaccines help prevent severe and deadly outcomes, and that is all. COVID hits red states no harder than it hits blue states. (gasps) Most masks do zero to prevent COVID. Yes, all of these are becoming clear now, even to the leftists. Lockdowns are an unnecessary disaster. School closures, same. Hospitalizations of children are being grossly overstated. They are including children hospitalized with COVID instead of just children hospitalized because of COVID. And finally, relying on the number of COVID cases as proof of COVID severity is pointless. The relevant metrics are hospitalizations and deaths. COVID is here to stay. We need to live with it, not live cautiously biding our time until it's gone. If you've been consuming independent or more conservative press, you have known all of this. If you have been relying on leftist corporate media for your information these past two years, this may be news to you. Take, for example, Nicole Wallace. This is an educated person who once called herself a Republican and worked for the Bush administration. Now she's in lockstep with the Joy Reeds of the world. Take a listen to this person. I'm a Fauci groupie. I'm a thrice vaccinated mask adherent. I buy KN95 masks, buy the, you know, caseload. They're in every pocket. I wear them everywhere except when I sit down. And I am certain that this is not a variant I can outrun. First of all, the stomach turning, embarrassing virtue signaling. That's a good girl, Nicole. Good girl. You worship a government bureaucrat who has lied about COVID repeatedly. And you got all your shots and you wear your N95 masks and you never leave home without them. And you muzzle your children all day long. What a good girl you are. Let me rub your belly. (laughs) But what's really happening here is she is starting to see the truth. And by the way, that truth existed before Omicron, when you could still get COVID despite the vaccine and despite the mask, Nicole, even if you are a Democrat. The dirty little COVID veil is starting to fall away from her eyes and certain truths that have been obvious to the rest of us for months are dawning on her. And it's not just Nicole Wallace. Joe Biden, who eviscerated President Trump, for COVID deaths on his watch and ran for office on the promise that he would shut down the virus, finally admitted there are limits to what the federal government can do. There is no federal solution. This gets solved at a state level. State level. There's no federal solution. This is the same person who said Donald Trump should be booted from office because some 200,000 Americans had died of COVID at the point he made the argument. Far fewer than would die on Joe Biden's watch, which, by the way, was all post-vaccine. 220,000 Americans dead. If you hear nothing else I say tonight, hear this. Anyone who's responsible for not taking control, in fact, not saying I'm I take no responsibility initially. Anyone who's responsible for that many deaths should not remain as president of the United States of America. And this president, if he's reelected, you know what will happen. Cases and deaths will remain far too high. Now we're over 800,000 deaths in America. And the cases are as rampant as they have ever been here. Now that that's the case, it's, well, no president can solve this. As Rich Lowry of National Review asked this week, and where does Trump go for his apology? The rise in Omicron, a relatively mild virus, thankfully for the vast majority of people who get it, has forced even the prophet Fauci to admit that the obsession with case numbers as a metric for community response is off base. As you get further on and the infections become less severe, it is much more relevant to focus on the hospitalizations as opposed to the total number of cases. More shockingly, he has finally, finally,
finally, almost two years into this pandemic, admitted the need to balance the goal of minimizing COVID with the need to live our lives as Americans, a free people. The CDC last week, with Fauci's blessing, shortened the quarantine time for people with COVID and those in close contact with them down to five days from 10. I mean, obviously, if you have symptoms, you should not be out. But if you are asymptomatic and you are infected, we want to get people back to the jobs, particularly those with essential jobs, to keep our society running smoothly. So I think that was a very prudent and good choice on the part of the CDC. You see, he's saying there are other things to consider beside this obsession with zero COVID. We have to keep society rolling. We have to keep business open. We can't just hover shelter in place and and live in fear. That's essentially what he's saying, that there is a need for balance. Believe me, from Fauci, that's huge. Now, some leftists told for months by Fauci and others that the virus remains contagious for at least 10 days. you got to quarantine for at least 10 days. Now they're mad. They, they don't see the return to work as a valid explanation for exposing contagious people to the world. And now they're saying, well, we might moderate it. Maybe we're going to say five days and then you can come back to the workforce if you get a positive test. Well, why didn't they say that to begin with? Because there aren't any tests because they know they didn't create tests. They didn't in- encourage the creation of tests and they can't really require tests of people because nobody can get them. That's their own creation. That's their own problem that they created. So we'll see if they if they change that or not. Uh, But the truth is that that 10 days was a made up standard from the beginning, as was the six feet distancing rule, as was the cloth mask rule, as was the 70 percent for herd immunity rule. I could go on. The point is, we have been lied to. We have been actively misled. We have been led around like mules on a tether by government bureaucrats like Fauci, who want to shut down your job while he makes north of $400,000 a year. And we learned this week is set to retire with a pension of over $350,000 a year. These people want to muzzle your kid all day at school while they parade around maskless at dinners and the Met Gala and so on. They want to scare parents into sticking an experimental vaccine into their kids' arms over and over and over. Not one, but two shots. And then a mandatory third or no sports or school or indoor fun of any kind. Despite the data that unvaccinated young people face a risk far less severe than that of fully vaccinated adults. By the way, the Justice Department just admitted in a filing in support of its uh, vaccine mandate that people between the ages of 18 and 30 have about the same risk of, of, you know, from COVID as those who are 50 plus who are fully vaccinated. So the unvaccinated 30 year old has about the same risk as the fully vaccinated 50 year old. And yes, and yet we're firing people. We're firing 18 to 30 year olds for not getting the vaccine. They had to admit it in court. You see, just like Trump and his election story, uh, when they get into court, they start to tell the truth. And the Biden administration is telling the truth about the real risk young people face. And it's minuscule and does not justify vaccine mandates or any of this nonsense. And their lies are starting to be exposed. So while we continue to see outrages, I mean, we have, not everyone's listening to reason. They're just starting to. We continue to see outrages like schools closing right now, despite the harm we know this causes the children. Thanks a lot, unions. Or letters like the one from our own boys' school proclaiming that, oh, of course, that's a quote, of course the boys will remain masked for the foreseeable future. <sighs> or the notice in my friend's New York City building mandating that all contractors, delivery personnel, and employees servicing residents in the building must now be fully vaccinated. Okay, so now your cleaning lady, your plumber, your pizza delivery guy, they got to get vaxxed to do their jobs? Despite all of that, the house of cards is coming down. The realities of COVID are becoming undeniable. When even the leftists start to realize that COVID comes for all, even Democrats in New York City, even members of the media, the politics will moderate. Voters will make sure of it. There are enough conservatives and independent and center leftists out there that voters will make sure of it. 
And for that reason, we should be hopeful that this madness will soon be over. <laughs>